little connection with each other. And um, so uh, we'll all just say hi, and then you're welcome to keep your camera on or off as uh, we go through the agenda. Um, and then after that, uh, Brendan, we'll do the official quorum check. Just give everybody a minute. Sounds all good. right. Uh, I'm Andy P, city of San Luis Obispo, and I uh, currently serve as the chair. And I'm just gonna say names as I see them across on my screen. Joey, you are next. Good afternoon. This is uh, Joey Style with County Public Works. Uh, just joining as an attendee. Awesome. Brendan. Yeah, I'm Brendan Clark, um, Secretary of the Committee and um, Water Resources Engineer for County Public Works. Thanks. Patricia. Hi, Patricia Wilmore, Paso Robles Wine Country Alliance. Thank you, Hillary. Hi, Hillary Graves from the Estrella Opamar Preston Water District. Thank you, Courtney. Good here is Courtney from uh, County Public Works, Water Resources Division Manager. Thank you, uh, Robert. Robert. Happy New Year, everyone. Robert, Robert, City of Grover Beach, City Council. Thanks. Christine. Happy New Year, everyone. Christine Mulholland, uh, Environmental at Large. And Willie. Hi, uh, Willie Cunha for uh, the Shannon San Juan. Steve Sitton will be able to attend today. So I'll be hitchhiking along and report back to our board. Happy New Year. Great. Thanks, Willie. Uh, Mark Zimmer. Hi, good afternoon. Mark Zimmer, General Manager for Golden State Water Company. Uh, actually, the alternate, uh, Jonas Alvarez, is uh, not the state, and so he won't be Okay, thanks. Um, Gwen. No, Gwen. Tell us. Hi, I'm Gwen Callis, Chairperson of the San Simeon Community Service District. Happy New Year to all, and unfortunately, my camera does not work. Okay, thanks. We're glad you're here anyway. Um, Mario. Yes, hi, Mario Iglesias, uh, General Manager here at the Pomo Community Services District. Great, nice to meet you. Um, Steve Carter. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Steve Carter from the Slow County Farm Bureau, and I don't have a, a uh, camera on this computer. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Great, thanks, Steve. Uh, Ed. Ed Eby in the Puma Community Services District Director. Great, thank you. Uh, Greg. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Greg Graywall, resident of Creston. Great, thank you, Greg. Um, Kelly. Hi, I'm Kelly Portner with the City of San Luis Obispo. Thanks. Uh, uh, Brent, I don't think I got you yet. Brent Burchett. I, got a oh. I think we have Brent yet. We'll circle back. Ron Lund. Good afternoon. Uh, Ron Lund, Los Oso CSD General Manager. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see where they go. Uh, David and Linda. Uh, uh, Dave Chipping, Environment at Large. Uh, Linda Chipping, Coastal San Luis Resource Conservation District. Great, okay, thank you. Uh, Kevin. Kevin Piper, Coastal San Luis Resource Conservation District alternate. Thank you. Uh, Nick Teague. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Nick Teague with the City of Slow Water Resources Program Manager. Thanks. And our illustrious Vice Chair, Ray. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Ray Dienzo, District Engineer here at Cambria Community Services District. Thank you. Uh, Lee Nesbitt. Lee Nesbitt, EPC Water District. Thank you. Um, Deborah Logan. 
Good afternoon, Deborah Logan, TCSD or Templeton Community Service District, and I'm the board president. Thank you. Uh, Michael Borman? I'm Michael Borman, City of San Luis Obispo staff. Thanks. Hey, George. Hi there. George Kendall, Upper Salinas Las Tablas Resource Conservation District. Great, thanks. Uh, Lewis. Lefebvre. Lefebvre. Hi there, I'm Louis Lefebvre. I'm uh, with the Wallace Group. Tuning in. Great. Oh, that's Great. Thank you. Um, Tim Kershaw? Uh, hi, yeah, Tim Kershaw with uh, Cleveland Terrace Geologists. Thanks. Hey, Sheila. Sheila, we're introducing ourselves. If you want to unmute, say hi. Okay, we'll circle back. Um, Spencer. Can't quite tell who that is. Um, Brandon Zunig. Hi, this is Brandon Zunig with the County of San Luis Obispo Public Works Water Resources Division. Great, thank you. Uh, Charles Grace. Charles Grace, San Simeon CSD, General Manager. Thank you. Hey, Toby. Good afternoon. Toby Moore, uh, Water Resources Manager and Chief Hydrogeologist for Golden State Water Company. Thanks. Um, Matthew. Don't know Matthew either. Scrut, sorry. And uh, somebody who's caller one, but that might be a phone with somebody who just has a uh, photo. Yeah, Matthew's here. I couldn't get my, oh, couldn't get my okay. computer to work. Go yeah, ahead, Matthew. Hi. And you're with, sorry, just well, I'm, with, um, I'm sorry, it's uh, Santa Barbara County Water Agency. Oh, yeah, great. Thank you. And then is there another caller? Caller one, is that somebody? Alan Duckworth, District 5. Okay. Thank you. And I feel like uh, Kirk. I miss Kirk. There's a couple here that's jumped on in the meantime. Hi, Andy, and everybody else. Uh, good afternoon. This is Kirk Gonzalez, Water Resources Manager, City of Paso Robles. Oh, great. Thank you, Kirk. And did I get Jeff? Um, all right. Free for all. Who did I miss? Did anybody jump on and hasn't had a chance to introduce themselves? Uh, Tim Walters. Hi, Tim. We're all just introducing ourselves, saying hi. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm just going from one to the next. So That's all right. That's hi, everyone. Welcome. Happy New Year. And uh, Tim is um, development at large. All right. Um, Brendan, how are we doing on, uh, any, I've got any 17 for quorum. 17? 17. Yep. Thanks everyone awesome. for being here today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump in. Um, are we, are we recording? Brendan? Looks yep. like it. All right, uh, so we need to, the first um, determination of quorum and introductions now uh, consider adopting a resolution regarding virtual meetings, AB 361. Brendan, do you want to introduce that item? Sure. Um, this is um, the allowance from the state um, government and what the governor has signed into law um, for us to continue meeting uh, virtually and you know have um, votes and make recommendations and meet as a brown eye committee um, so with a, um, you know a motion and a you know approval from the committee we can continue meeting um, virtually today and it's a renew every 30 days which basically for us means we have to renew each time we meet and um, then we just kind of keep it in the file so um, that's that. Um, right. We did one of these in October when we last met, and um, 
one of the triggers um, is the CDC's, um, it's listed in here, the community transmission metric. And so that's something we're watching. Um, the last I checked, we were in the high tier. Um, and um, so that just goes into the reso and um, we you know, would continue to move forward. Great, thank you. So I'll entertain a motion, Christine. Yes, I move that we uh, adopt AB 361 for this meeting today on Wednesday, January 5th of 2022. Thank you. Is there a second? This is Deborah Logan. I'll second that motion. Great. Thank you, Deborah. And um, because we are such a large group, um, Brendan, are we okay doing the uh, assume approve, but um, give an opportunity for nays, or do we have to yeah. do a roll call? I, I think we can just we can do the uh, you know group wide and ask for um, abstentions right. or nays, and then I'll just record that in the reso. All right. So if you uh, um, are uh, in support, then you don't have to do anything. Uh, otherwise, I will call for any opposition or uh, abstention. So first, is there anyone opposed? Please um, unmute and say so. Okay, um, seeing none. Any abstentions? Seeing none, motion carries. All right, we're gonna do a similar process uh, for meeting minutes from October, but first, are there any, uh, is any uh, discussion or um, comments on that? Uh, yes, Dave Chipping here. Uh, you may remember last time, Christine complained about the fact that when a question was asked, there was no recorded response. And this time it's the same way. So uh, again, I asked several questions and I had no clue as to what, <laughs> because I didn't take notes, uh, what was said back to me. So uh, that is a sort of a, a complaint and I hope we can change that from the county. Right, I think what we settled on last time was that we would at least record what the question was, but that the answers are often kind of long and involved. And so if you knew, what question was asked and needed to go back and find it that the recordings are available. Um, but otherwise, kind of writing down the entire content of the meeting, I think we didn't feel was um, the, the appropriate utilization of resources and frankly can be mm, in and of itself trying to summarize something nuanced, I think, uh, has a precedent for, um, it, you know, has a potential for error. Brendan, is that your yes. kind of recollection? Yep. Fair. So, so sorry, David. Um, complaint noted, and uh, I think we're gonna. I think this is the the mid range that we need to hit on this. All right. Any other questions or comments on the meeting minutes? Okay. With that, I'll entertain a motion. I move approval of minutes as submitted. Thank you, Christine. I'll second. Sorry, who was that? I think that was Tim. Tim. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right, uh, same process. We're assuming approval. Uh, is there anyone opposed? Please say so now. And any abstentions? All right. Awesome. I, think I saw Thanks Charles so raise. I saw Charles raise his hand. Um, Sorry, Charles. And then his video cut out. So I um, <laughs> guess I can circle back with him to confirm. Um, no, I just was going to abstain because I was got in late to this one and I was missed the last meeting. So I'm abstaining on the minutes. Okay. okay. So Charles Popo uh, abstaining on the minutes. Thank you for that. Okay. Minutes carry. Thanks so much. All right, and then our next item is to receive a staff update regarding the state water project management tools and associated RAC subcommittee and consider actions. I think Courtney is taking this one. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, really a quick check in on this. Uh, we've been working on the study in collaboration with the Central Coast Water Authority and the RAC had formed an ad hoc subcommittee to uh, follow it um, kind of at the detail level and then report back to the RAC. 
but there's been some turnover um, in the committee and we were down to two folks on the ad hoc subcommittee, which is Hillary and Grayson and Shirley Gibson. And so just wanted to check back in with the RAC to see if you wanted to add more members to this ad hoc subcommittee um, because there's a upcoming stakeholder meeting on January 12th. And I just wanted to make sure you had the opportunity to add some more folks if you wanted to, to continue to follow that study in detail. And so that, All right. yeah, that was kind of my Great, ask for you. today. <laughs> thank you. And um, so let's see, any, any discussion, questions, comments? on this item? Are there folks who who have been serving and want to comment on that and or folks who are interested in stepping in? So I guess, Courtney, the question is, do you need more participation or are the two remaining members yeah, if, if you guys are okay with that, um, you know, uh, Hillary and Shirley can continue to be the liaisons and um, this January 12th meeting is to go over the draft final report. And so they can report back at a, a subsequent RAC meeting on kind of how it turned out and, um, and next steps going forward. Hillary, do you mind uh, jumping on and saying commenting on does that seem reasonable or do you think that we need to have some more representation? Oh, Hillary, oh bummer. Hillary left. Darn. Okay. Well, if she circles back, but otherwise um, we appreciate the update, Courtney, and I think we're going to leave it as it is for now. I'm not seeing anybody stepping in to um to join that group okay and state water is an ongoing management effort so mm -hmm. there will definitely be periodic updates as um you know this first study is really just the menu of options for how to um, manage state water going forward and any cooperative opportunities with central coast water authority and then uh, the next phase is, is um, trying to decide which of those tools to use so more to come Great. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right. So our next. Um... Okay. Andy, this is Greg Grill. Is there any public comment? Mm, sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll now take public comment on this item. Greg, did you have a comment? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know how many people know that uh, in 2022, the state is not going to deliver any state water. So our state water deliveries are based on 25,000 acre feet, which only 40% of that is paid for by the subcontractors. The other 60% is paid for by the rest of the uh, resident taxpayers in the County of San Luis Obispo who get no benefit. And the water that's stored at the San Luis Reservoir that some consider surplus, surplus is uh, your 401k. If that water was not to be there for this next year, there would be no water to give to the subcontractors who need 5,000 acre feet of water. So uh, I, when they talk about tools, it seemed to me the tools were how to exchange, sell, trade water that's in reserve when you have last year 5% delivery and this year 0% delivery. So. All right. Um, Andy, this is. Well, I, I would hope that tractors want to base their percentage of what they get off of 25,000 acre feet. They should pay for the whole 25,000 acre feet and not have the rest of the taxpayers pay for it. All right, thank you, Greg, for your comment. Um, this is Patricia Wilmore. I would just like to ask Courtney where to get more information about the stakeholder meeting on January 12th. 
Yes, I could send you the link. I believe it's on our website too, but I could follow up with that. Okay, that, thank you. It'll be an online meeting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. And uh, Hillary Graves, we lost you for a moment. Did you have anything you wanted to add in terms of, at this point, we're just gonna have the two of you uh, stay on unless you think that we ought to have more RAC re representation. Yeah, sorry about that. I um, My internet stopped working, so I had to come back. Um, yeah. I have, so I'm, I, you're asking if I want to remain on the state water contractors subcommittee. Is that correct? Well, I, uh, I've assumed that you wanted to stay on. We originally had five people on. Now it's down to two. Um, at this point, nobody else is really stepping forward to kind of fill it back up to five. So I wanted to just get your feedback to make sure um that you thought having the two of you um you and um uh, shirley uh, gibson if if you're comfortable with kind of being the two representatives for rack to this meeting um to that group yeah i am comfortable i have to say that i haven't been participating as much as i would like just um okay. i had some work changes over the last three months that have kept me very busy but um, my intention is to be more, you know, attend more and be more involved. So I'm fine to continue with um, representing RAC on that sub subcommittee. Great, thank you. All right, any other um, board member, uh, RAC member uh, comments or public comments on this item before we move on? All right, seeing and hearing none. I think, uh, I think that's good to go. You set, Courtney? All right, and, and our next item is to receive a presentation from staff regarding the master water report update. And I think Brendan's gonna provide this one. Super excited about this item. All right. Thanks, Andy. Um, yeah, so I know we've been, um, uh, we have been as a county and I have been um, personally mentioning, uh, we're gonna update the master water report and um, so, and there has been some steps taken, um, particularly last year, um, we do have an RFP out on the street right now. And so wanna provide an update for the committee on, um, on you know, what we're asking for, the goals of the project, um, what's in the RFP and what are our hopes and dreams are and a bit um, update on the schedule. Um, and I'll just say here from at the start, I'm, I'll am i be a, a little limited in responding to questions right now, given the RFP is still open. Um, but if there are questions that have, you know, I would say black and white answers back inside the RFP, then I could point back there. Um, but this is not the only time we will be here um, providing an update to the committee um, and we'll be able to you know uh, answer more questions um, you know as we move forward um, so with that I'm going to provide um, a bit of a background um, on the master water report the goals and the scope of work um, of the project and um, the schedule and I do want to note that in the staff report I have included um, the Kind of the, the meat of our RFP, which is the scope of work, um, some of the maps and our ideas and a grant application um, that are a, a grant we've been awarded um, for reference. So I will describe those, um, uh, those attachments to the staff report. Um, so first, um, kind of to summarize where we were with the last master water report, which was adopted in 2012. Um, it was a three to four years worth of work and Courtney knows it very detailed. Um, she was the project manager on the project. And um, the 2012 report um, covered um, quickly just its own, you know, obviously goals and objectives, its own limitations, um, a comprehensive description of the county, um, county's water resources, what the study areas were, how the county was broken down into certain areas and how it wasn't, um, what those water sources and uses are, um, just from a descriptive information standpoint. Um, then it summarized all the existing data sources, programs um, that were available um, to be compiled and analyzed in the report. Um, chapter four is where the detailed supply 
demand um, data and analysis for each water planning area is. We'll describe a little bit about water planning areas more um, here in a few minutes. Um, and uh, the report also documented the relationship to other state and local um, documents and reports, um, such as you know the state water plan or our IRWM plan for our, our county um, and others. So um, I will say we really like this report. This is a, um, a good report, um, but it does have um, limitations and it, it a lot of the data and analysis is point in time. And you know obviously as we move farther and farther away from 2009, 2010, from when the data was compiled, um, you know, that data becomes more out of date and becomes um, less useful for um, you know, making recommendations and um, supporting you know, our Board of Supervisors in their decision making. So that's one of the key drivers for us, um, which I'll mention again um, for doing the update. Um, another thing in the report um, are the recommendations. And there's, um, I believe I put a link to the report in um, our staff report, so you can find this in more detail, but just for an example, the executive summary within the first couple pages includes a series of recommendations that could be summarized in supply and interagency agreements um, and arrangements, water balances analysis and management, and future master water report updates. So here, um, the one of the recommendations I pulled here as an example is just creating a framework for maintaining the master water report, and that's um, that's a really good summary of what we're trying to accomplish with this RFP and with this project kickoff is um, creating a system where we can provide these data and this analysis um, more easily and it can be tracked and followed as um, cities and, and as the county itself updates their reports um, and as projects get built um, and um, demands change with general plan adoptions, we'll be able to, to track that along um, and provide uh, more up-to-date data and analysis um, than on a 10-year refresh cycle, which is what we're kind of currently looking at. Um, all right, and then another background here is the Regional Early Action Planning Grant. Um, this is included in the attachments. Um, I'm going to call it the REAP grant for short. Um, this is a non-competitive funding opportunity from the state, um, mostly geared toward planning, um, planning level documents and analysis um, and um, the so public works along with planning and building department and the administrative office um, last year um, looked at okay what are what are the needs what does the county need um, to um, better support you know looking ahead and, and moving forward um, and in our planning and our development and meeting any housing goals um, what what are the needs? And the unanimous agreement was um, updating the master water report um, as an understanding of water is vital to any of those types of decisions. And so um, there's a connection here with the master water report and the resource management system that planning uses um, as um, the master water report is, is the foundational document for those water-based water um, alerts and water-based recommendations. Um, and then also we have our Regional Water Infrastructure Resiliency Plan, which we presented here to the committee um, a few months ago. And you know that plan is a good example of you know, we created um, you know with our consultant, um, as you can see here with WSC and with a um, you know a team of uh, cities and agencies staff, you know created a um, a methodology for analyzing. The, the risk and um, the resiliency that various water systems, I think we analyzed 40 water systems in our county, has to drought, to critical system failures, to other things. And so um, that created a point in time analysis um, for where communities are, maybe where communities could be, and where uh, maybe some resiliency needs are. Um, um, and so that methodology can then be put into what we're trying to develop with the master water report. So let's say agency A um, uses the water management tools um, and is able to have a backup, say a drought um, source of, of water. We could then rerun the regional water infrastructure resiliency plan methodology and get revised um, resiliency scores for our community 
um, to help us, you know, look where to go and, and um, give an up-to-date snapshot of where we're at. And so I mentioned these two specifically, the resource management system and, and the infrastructure resiliency plan, because in the grant application, we said these are two things that, that this project and your grant funds state are going to help us develop and maintain um, into the future. So these are part of the deliverables um, we'll be giving to the state is showing how um, this system and this project is going to be able to serve um, and, um, and provide these. Um, this data and analysis. All right, so that's some of the background that's going into uh, the creation of this RFP. And so we have our um, RFP, again, it's currently on the street. And um, so, and the goal of our RFP is to find a qualified consultant or consultant team to assist the county in the programming um, and development of this comprehensive update to our master water report. And um, the project goals, which I have included um, in the staff report, is on page five two. Um, you know, includes a GIS and web-based system, um, being able to track water um, as well as wastewater, recycled water, um, project completion, um, perhaps even project um, design, so we can do some forecasting, um, recreating supply and demand. Um, analysis and charts at, um, and as I've written here, at various scales. And what I mean by various scales is we could, um, being able to run a county-wide snapshot, um, a water planning area snapshot, a service boundary area snapshot, um, we need to be able to provide data and analysis to support the board in making decisions when it comes to um, moratoriums and growth ordinances and things and so being able to provide specific data um, is going to be really important um, moving forward and so when I say water planning area um, I know this map is a little hard to read but the most important part here are the yellow lines and so the yellow lines represent um, what we're calling our six water planning areas um, they follow the watershed boundaries and um, as you can see um, groundwater basins are um, captured wholly within um, these water planning areas and so we're going to be you know, the goal here is to look at water from a watershed groundwater um, you know, full um, watershed scope and so um, our last master water report had 16 water planning areas so for example the Paso Basin area was broken into multiple water planning areas um, and so um, now we're we're taking a little little wider view and look at these things as entire um, entire systems. And then obviously with Sigma, there um, are gonna be specific reports and area and um, you know groups and stakeholders um, that will contribute to looking at these specific water planning area um, you know, tables and data. And another example of what various scales could mean are these, this is the USGS watershed scale so the dark purple are the larger watersheds and the kind of brighter purple represent sub watersheds um, and so for example we want to be able to look at um, you know rainfall and other water water supply data if, at these various um, higher watershed you know in the Salinas area specifically or um, all the coastal areas or specifically at the Morro Bay watershed. Um, and so these are some of the boundaries that we're going to be looking at as we move forward. All right, in our um, in our RFP, we outlined a preliminary kind of scope of work and um, a programming of the project. And um, so this would be um, you know, project management, um, kind of self-explanatory. Um, there'd be stakeholder engagement, um, which includes um, this committee. Um, we think then that goes into water data and information audit. Um, so that's um, identifying the stakeholders who have a role in managing or using data um, and how it relates to water supply and demand. And, and then understanding what data and information is useful um, for us, where it comes from, um, and how it can be um, you know, updated in the future and tracked and managed. Um, then management system alternatives. So we have not defined a specific system or program that we want to do this through. Um, we we think there's going to be multiple ways to do it, and so we're looking for 
um, our consultant or consultant team to provide some different options, you, you know, even if it's cloud versus on-site server, you know, what the potential benefits or proprietary software versus a package software. Um, you know, we want to know what's out there so we can make um, the best decision possible on how to do what we want to do. Um, and then there's developing the management system and reporting tools, um, which I think are, you know, kind of explanatory based on uh, what we've presented already, um, you know, supply and demand reports and uh, resiliency reports, um, water planning area conditions, project status summaries, um, understanding where we are, uh, for example, with recycled water um, and trying to have that one, that one central location where this water data can be viewed um, and accessed and then provided. Again, the goal is to provide um, decision makers like the board, a planning commission, or even um, LAFCO or other groups um, so they can make the most informed decisions um, possible. And then lastly, there will be an update to the actual um, master report. And I think that is a little bit to be determined on how we, what we publish written and how often um, we'll have the data there. And that's what we're gonna work through. Um, another thing I wanna point out is we have a, what's called exhibit B. And this is on page five, five of the staff report. And we call this additional information. And this is kind of the brain dump um, of everything we think is related to um, what the system could be and what we're looking for the consultant team to help us out with. Um, some of these things we've already mentioned, um, but we you know, definitely wanna expand the scope, not just you know, surface water, groundwater, delivered potable water, but how recycled water, and, um, recycled water potential, wastewater capacities um, can fit in you know, thinking about, um, you know, future um, water supply projects and um, seeing how different regulatory agencies are looking for, um, well, what are you doing with recycled water? Um, if you want to do desal, um, you know, Coastal Commission is looking at that type of thing. So, you know, we want to be able to have all this data and have this infrastructure built so we can answer those types of questions. Um, how could we do drought reports? Um, and how can we assist with groundwater basin and watershed model updates, um, you know, for our GSPs and for our basins? Um, we've listed a number of potential input sources, um, development ideas. We have uh, want to in include our land use water factors, our water duty factors, our um, GIS that our ag department um, publishes every year about irrigated ag. Um, so there's a number of things like that. We have various stakeholder groups, again, like RAC. Um, we have our internal to the county groups, various departments, how they use water. We have our um, other countywide um, government type um, agencies like LAFCO, SLOCOG that are looking um, and use water in their decision making. Um, and then, you know, looking ahead, trying to anticipate, well, what kind of decision, decisions are we um, anticipating using this data in this system to help support, again, help support the board or other decision makers, um, you know, when it comes to lifting or declaring or extending building water service moratoriums where the county has land use um, authority. Um, what do we, what's the future of, of state water? How do we use the water management tools? Um, these are being able to have the latest information um, and data um, is helpful for those decisions. And then, you know, if there's going to be an investment into the next generation of water supply, um, whether it's a Salinas Dam or resiliency infrastructure or other types of projects, um, you know, we see this this data and analysis and being able to stay up to date as key in informing um, those decisions and um, definitions of projects. All right. So um, with that briefly, just a little bit about our project schedule. We have um, some of the schedule is open-ended and some of the schedule is um, limited. So first off, I just have here the RFP schedule. Um, we are, expect to have um, our consultant on board and, um, and with a notice to proceed by mid-May. Um, we expect that there will be an award by the Board of Supervisors and um, we'll be reviewing um, proposals starting here in the middle of the month after they're submitted um, on the 14th. 
And then the next kind of big deliverable point is we, we do need to report back to the REAP grant in October of um, 2023. So um, a little over 18 months from now. Um, so, you know, from my my standpoint, you know, the project is probably a little bit longer term than than that. So, but um, we should have a skeleton of the project up and be able to um, show these draft reports um, by then and the methodology, and then we could continue on developing the project um, for all the things we want to do that weren't listed in the grant. Um, and so we expect that it's going to be a two plus year project um, from the notice to proceed. And so I'm going to say that is our update. Um, we're going to return to RAC at you know milestone points. Um, I could see us coming back um, probably early fall um, when the consultant is on board to talk a little bit about where we're going and um, what the what our next steps are. And then again, just a reminder um, with the RFP still open, I'm gonna, I'll open up for a limited Q and A and um, Hope there'd be understanding uh, if I say I'm going to pass on a question um, at this point. And so, um, with that, I'll um, I will open it up and for any comments, and um, we can go from there. Thanks, Brendan. And um, maybe take off, stop the sharing so we can see each other better, and then open it up. Any questions or comments? I see David and I see Charles. Go ahead, David, and then Christine. Uh, okay, well, I was, I, this is pretty impressive, but I, I have uh, some questions in regard, for example, to the regional early action planning, which is you know, at, the, at the back of the report, in which uh, the county is going to eliminate, apparently, the individual water analysis for individual projects and substitute the product of this report, which will be an overall standard that will be held to, so a development won't have to do an individual analysis. And I, I have some worry about that because I see nowhere in any of this the identification of red lines, that is, uh, to avoid what's going on in the Central Valley. As some of you have probably read the uh, article two weeks ago by the LA Times, The Race to the Bottom, in which Sigma impacted basins in the valley are just dropping like mad because all the agriculturalists are drilling deeper and deeper and deeper. So I'm wondering, is there anywhere in this red lines that say, thou shalt not pass this particular amount of drawdown without, um, for example, forcing ag to no longer pump or something like that. Uh, it doesn't seem to me that this is part of the report. It's basically data and I, I'm wondering we were, we were passing all of that kind of policing onto the Board of Supervisors. Uh, is there a, any kind of monitoring in here uh, and red lines and do not pass points in, in basin monitoring? Thank you. Yeah, a um, couple questions in there. Um, but I'd say the, um, the intent of that paragraph in the grant application about EIRs is that the EIRs um, for these projects, when it comes to water supply, are all done in bubbles, and they're not tracked and um, kind of like maintained in some so as to inform the next project. They're all done within a bubble, and so this is not a replacement of any EIR project specific EIR effort um, it's more being able to what can we glean from these individual processes that inform the next one that's the intent um, and as far as basin red lines I I think it, it would defer to the, to the individual basins they're managed um, separately I I don't see us um, creating um, red lines here um, as you describe them that's going to be on a basin by basin via their management. So if Courtney want to add or change anything I just said, but um, oh, I yeah, I wrapping. concur. And yeah, we're just going to add the resource management system. You know, they were using the the data from the master water report, and so this is our attempt to um, build a system that 
that keeps that data more up to date so that when they do need it for the resource management system or whatever the next generation of, of that system is, um, they'll have um, more readily available information. And so, you know, the future of the resource management system is, is still out there as a, as, a, as a decision point, probably as, you know, it kind of in parallel once we get a certain, um, at a certain point down the road with this project. All right, that was, thank you. That's a, 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 a big question. Uh, so uh, hopefully that was enough answer from um, David. Charles and then Christine. Uh, thank you, Andy. Um, and Brendan, I, perhaps I should just ask this question offline to you after if you're available, but it's about the reprint thing. Um, so if you'd prefer, I can just call you after. Um, yeah, and if, if we, um, we don't touch base today then uh yeah we could try for tomorrow so specific to the reap grants okay. in terms of the allocation charles or was that right right okay right or the process so i mean it's listed as already having been allocated by slowcog in in june of 2020 but and then it's listed there's a deadline on january 14th and i just wanted to touch base on that Oh, that was. Yeah. Yeah, so this is this is an applicant. I should have been more clear. I apologize. So we we applied. This is in the past. The agreement's already set and signed, and actions already taken. Um, so that um, yeah, I think it was twenty. Um, so June of twenty twenty allocations were done by SlowCog based on Rena, you know, allocations. But then in your slideshow, you showed like a January fourteenth. You know, next or in a couple of weeks. Um, deadline oh, that was for, for our RFP. Yeah, that was for our RFP. So our our consultant, for the consultant. Uh, our consultant um, proposals will be coming in January fourteenth. Uh, okay, it was in ref it was listed as a reap re related item. So okay, yeah, apologize for that confusion. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Good question, uh, Christine. Uh, this certainly looks like a, a really big project, but it also looks as if it's going to try to address an issue that the RAC has talked about for well over a dozen years, and that is how to make water information in this county more readily available to the public through digitization, and we have talked about such things as well logs, et cetera, being involved in trying to understand uh, the ability of the public to access public records. Um, when I say this is a big job, I read an article recently, some of you may have seen the state water resources trying to digitize and organize all of its records and the paper weight of their records right now is so heavy they're having to reinforce the floor where those records are sitting right now at the state as they try to work through somewhat of a similar process i know they're not exactly uh, parallel but um this is a big project to try to get something like this all up digitized and accessible to the public which i think is really should be anyway one of the main goals here not just for staff and uh, insiders to be able to access water information but really uh, to be available and and easily accessible to the public so thank you for um your work on this thanks christine uh, all right, and I'll open it up to uh, members of the public. Anybody have questions or co comments? Andy, I do. Greg Graywall. Paco, go ahead, Greg. Thank you. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, uh, Brandon talked about uh, moratorium on building. So the state's imposed rules where you can build ADUs all over the place and hook to existing sewer systems and water systems. Then we have the non-use of the water use of Nacimento. And I'm gonna use Paso Robles as an example. 
So in the last four years, I don't know about 2021 yet, but the previous four years, they didn't use 21,000 acre feet of water. They could have been used instead of pumping from the basin. So it went to the ocean. Uh, Atascadero didn't use about 1,250 over that same four year period of each year. I don't know what San Luis didn't use. That's not beneficial use of water. All the people that live in the unincorporated area return all of their wastewater through their septic systems back to groundwater. This does not happen in the incorporated areas. Then we have water duty factors. We have a water duty factor of 1.25 for planting for grapes, which is okay. But the actual factor on a four year study by Mark Batney shows it's less than one acre foot. That's a 10,000 acre foot difference in actual storage in the ground. And I wanna know, are we connected or are we gonna get connected to Landsat and have accurate ET, which is evapotranspiration, uh, so that we can actually see stuff on time when we wanna see it. Also, I've been asking for eight years, how come none of the county properties in the unincorporated areas or any areas and or city properties that have wells don't have actual time where you can wad monitor the well like we do for uh, the lake, the, the uh, elevation of the lakes or the rainfall totals or any of the other stuff. And as far as for uh, drilling deeper in the valley, right now they're letting all the stormwater go out the delta that could be being sent to the Central Valley to the Tulare Basin to be recharging that basin, but they're not doing that. Why? Just a few questions that I think we should look into. Oh, also, December 18th, the state opened up uh, at on a Friday at 3.30 till February 18th, uh, grant applications for critically overdrafted basins, which during this holiday period would only amount to about 25 days out of that 60 days. What's going on as far as anybody looking at money for any critical uh, basins, which there's 26 of, they claim, uh, for that money. And where's the introduction of our new Sigma guy for the county? Thank you. All right, thanks, Greg. A couple of those items weren't uh, specific to the uh, master water report. Um, they were noted anyway, but um, Brendan or Courtney, did you have any responses? Um, well, I just I did want to add that we we did include in our RFP um, that the open environment. Um, I'm going to totally evapotranspiration data. Um, I thought I was going to mess that up, but uh, that mm -hmm. is a potential input source, um, and that's definitely something we could use and we know is available. And um, and it's how do we want to use it? And I would I would also add that having a system like this allows us to um, make changes to water duty factors as we learn more. And where if we published a point in time report, uh, it's more more rigid. Um, and so um, I think we, I, yeah, so that's, I, that, I think those are some specific things to respond to and obviously and there's nothing to comment about the Valley and things like that, so. All right. Great, thank you. Uh, Steve, I see you unmuted. Did you have a comment? Yeah, I just had a question for Brendan. Um, do you see some of the work that you're gonna be contracting for, do you see it duplicating work that the GSAs and some of the Sigma regulated basins are already required to do? Um, so there, you know, obviously there's a, a num of significant reporting that the basins do individually, especially with their annual reports. And, you know, uh, I think it goes without saying we're not looking to reinvent that if it's already happening, but how could we use it and um, and tap into it um, and to, pr you know, provide those snapshots and different things. Um, uh, you know, the basins are looking at specific parts of the county um, and you know we're we're trying to go a level up from that um, countywide. So that information is going to be really important, and I don't I don't want to try to duplicate it. 
Thank you. It also Thank you. has. A, I would also add uh, that it does have a, a slightly different end user. So the basins and those reports are meeting certain specific state, you know, um, um, templates and outlines and requirements. Um, and uh, you know, we'd want to make sure they were, you know, useful to what we're trying to accomplish and what kind of, you know, data we think we need. Um, to provide to our decision makers. Um, so I would also note that there's a different audience there um, in some places for these types of reports. And I'll just yeah, add I'm... that we are working with our the new GSA or the GS the Groundwater Sustainability Director uh, pretty closely on on coordinating that this effort um, with you know the Sigma needs and where are the commonalities. And I'll make a note to ask him to come to the next RAC meeting. So. You can meet them and everything. Great. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you. Uh, David Chipping. Uh, question for Brendan. Um, Nipomo Mesa has a key wells index, which is published on a sort of annual basis. I was wondering whether uh, subsets of wells uh, that could be used as sort of equivalent key well in indices could be developed for a number of our basins. I haven't seen that yet. Maybe I missed it. Thank you. Uh, I think I, I'll, I'll ask Courtney to fill in, but uh, not within the scope of this project. Um, and if it's in a managed basin, I think we'd be looking to those managed basins to develop that. Yeah, part of the audit phase is, you know, what all is out there in terms of data, what data gets generated by various entities. And so, um, we, you know, our website currently points to, or we're working on pointing to their annual reporting process. Um, and then the unmanaged basins, uh, it is kind of on our initiative list to, um, now that we've, ha we're handing off the managed basins, we're going to turn our attention to the unmanaged basins. and. Um, can we improve our level measuring network out there and going forward, um, how can we better um, communicate what the conditions are as we gather more data over time? Great, thanks. I, um, I'm particularly, I'm really excited about this effort. This feels super central to RAC and uh, as Christine has noted in terms of kind of central to what we do and um, being able to um, be that bridge with a with the public to be able to get the information, but also seeing this um, uh, master water report as um, as a reliable tool to be able to do the analysis and comparison. I think that's so. In the past, we've been able to kind of get away with in some ways being in silos as communities as uh, regions, but we're finding. Uh, we're so interconnected in terms of our housing, our economies, our transportation, and um, and this feels like this the the water. We've just been kind of doing drips and drabs, and we have this opportunity to have a cohesive apples to apples um, understanding of where our entire county is in terms of um, of water. So. Uh, I, so I think this is a super uh, important tool, and I'm and I'm really grateful that staff, Brendan and the staff, is setting it up in a way that it'll be maintainable, that it'll be ongoing updates, and so even though the report and the analysis and the anticipated projects and recommendations will, you know, be renewed, at least, uh, you know, the data itself will be ongoing. So um, I'm really excited about that. Uh, and Brendan, you may not be able to touch on this yet until the project really gets rolling, but it, it looks like you have racks slated in for kind of regular updates and feedback. Are you anticipating a kind of a core task force or more of a um, groups as needed for particular sections and chapters or industries or something like that? What's the stakeholder engagement um, piece of this? Yeah, so I, we kind of, as I mentioned, in a few different places, um, we have task force mentioned in the preliminary scope of services, and it's not defined there. 
Um, and then in Exhibit B, we did list various groups. Some are public groups and some aren't of, um, you know, stakeholder groups that would need to be involved or should be involved um, in some way, shape, or form, but it hasn't hasn't totally been decided. Right. Okay. Fabulous. Any other comments from the RAC members or members of the public um, before we close up on this item? It's an information item only, so no action needed. All right. Seeing none, thank you so much uh, for bringing this to us and um, look forward to um, seeing more in the future. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so let's see, we're going to go to ongoing updates. Uh, and as usual, I'm going to um, read off each of these A through G items. And if anybody has a comment, anything they want to weigh in on, please just unmute and holler um, if you'd like to ask a question, have a comment. Uh, rain and reservoir report, obviously stale information, uh, free big rain. Uh, so we definitely have some, some good news since then. Uh, it captured most of it, to be honest, it Sorry. did capture most of it. Got it in right, right before, uh, right the day after oh, okay. uh, Monday after Christmas. We updated it before sending it out, so we did capture most oh, okay. of the good rain there. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Thank and, you. In a lot of places, we're already up to what we got last year. So. Uh, groundwater basin management efforts. Integrated regional water management. Yeah, I would want to just um, note um, there the draft guidelines for the next funding round have been released, and um, I think we have our we have an RWMG meeting planned um, for the 19th uh, to review uh, those um, that draft document and um, cool. start looking in our you know what our program's process is for local project um, you know selection and review as that whole, you know, um, what's a six month plus um, process to get a recommendation to the board and an application submitted. So um, if you're interested, uh, if your agency is has a project, water supply project um, or other, um, but obviously it's a water project, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me and make sure you're on our mailing list for that because we're going to, um, we're going to start ramping up. Right. Christine. Yes, thank you. Um, regarding Sigma, another article I read recently of great importance to me uh, was the authors of the Sigma legislation are now starting to think, oh, oh we put too long a time frame on this 2040. What were we thinking? And interestingly enough, I've been thinking that since the get-go, really, also because there have been no controls on drilling new wells and pumping groundwater throughout that time. So, yes, in the San Joaquin Valley and elsewhere, giant deep wells continue to be drilled on a regular basis. Groundwater is continuing to be pumped out. And yet, these basins are supposed to be coming into balance, not only here in our county, of course, but other Sigma basins statewide. And I thought that was pretty interesting that the uh, PV and several others of the original authors of the legislation believe now they goofed. Thank you. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, <laughs> good, co good comment. <laughs> we could always adopt it earlier uh, if we can. Um, all right, uh, oh. stormwater resource plan. Is that, do we need to keep that as an ongoing um, update? Or is that kind of? You know, that's a great question. I, I'm, uh, I think we could, um, maybe go uh, dormant on that unless there's another state specific stormwater grant program funding opportunity. Um, uh, you know, I know we've, we, 
from a staff standpoint, I think we we feel like we've made it, you know, got the message out um, and made it clear that, you know, the state the state laws now for grant grants is if you have a stormwater project and you're going after any state funding opportunity, it needs to go through the stormwater plan process. Um, and so we have that available. And for um, anyone, that's the county's only involvement in your grant, um, unless it's IRWM, obviously, but any other grant opportunity, you just have to have your project kind of go through this process, be on our list, and then you're eligible for stormwater funds. So that's that has been the message and continues to be the message. Um, but I don't know if we need to keep having specific updates um, for it. I think that's a, a good catch. And um, I. I I'm okay with taking it out and unless there's a specific opportunity um, that comes up again. So great. Thanks. And then various county water programs, policies, ordinances, anything new or changed on that. And then just an opportunity for open reporting on water conservation uh, in or uh, information. Anybody have anything there? All right, so good information as always. Uh, so I wanna to touch briefly on our um, uh, future agenda items. Uh, we've been having some planning meetings and our current, um, you know, as we talked about earlier in the year is that our intent uh, is to have these meetings when they are substantive, when they're substantive material that we want to um, address and uh, have an alignment with the um, efforts at the county. And if there are other specific educational information kinds of uh, presentations. So our current plan uh, is to not have a February meeting and to have our uh, March meeting uh, topics that we are considering is the um, PFOS, a uh, really critical water quality issue that we're seeing throughout our county and kind of emerging. And then um, there's also um, the Beaver Brigade has been wanting to share uh, the kind of the story of the beavers in our county and the, um, the kind of the water management uh, service they are providing in some ways. It's a really interesting process. I had a chance to um, visit with them and go out to one of the um, dams and hear more about that um, program. And and then uh, and then we still have some uh, interesting projects to bring into um, the rest of the spring RAC meetings. So those details are still pending. Thank you for everyone to everyone who did the um, uh, responded to the survey. Uh, so we're using those uh, opinions in terms of future topics uh, to be able to gauge interest in, um, in in what to bring to this group. And also as we think about uh, how to come back in person, there was a lot of interest in hybrid so that we can have that flexibility. We don't know that we have the technology necessarily right now to be able to do some in person and some in at home, you know remote for the same meeting. But what we are thinking is maybe we would end up having an approach where maybe twice a year we all get together in person, um, obviously when it's safe um, by COVID, um, but that other times that we stick with the remote because we are so spread out and, and we are getting a lot of um, attendance uh, for folks who weren't otherwise um, able to make the, the trek. So we're looking at different options there. Um, but for now, um, obviously still remote and um, and we're assuming it will be remote in March uh, and then we'll um, fill in from there. Brendan, anything or Ray, anything else on um, upcoming agendas that I missed? I think you covered it, Andy. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think the uh, I just would want to add, I, uh, I think moving forward, um, we are going to switch to using Zoom. So um, just wanted to put that out there if, to keep an eye out when we meet again in March. Um, I think we'll be uh, using Zoom. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Andy, uh, it's, yeah, it's Patricia. I um, hey. just wanna pick up on something Courtney said, and that would be 
at a future meeting to have Blaine really the um, director of groundwater sustainability for the county. It would be very good to hear about his efforts so far. Uh, as questions have come forward today about the water report, it would be helpful to have him explain how what he's doing aligns with the water resources division and public works just to get a little bit better understanding of the structure of all this yeah great idea patricia thanks for the follow-up on that great for asking in the first place as well yeah and i'd add too when when we do our annual budget presentation for the flood control district um we'll at least from a water resources side we'll definitely have some more insight for um for everyone uh there um you know, and what the this change and transition means moving forward. Yeah, good point. Anything else on agenda, future agenda items? All right, and now's our chance for public comment for items not on the agenda. Members or members of the public who would like to make a comment for an item that we haven't covered. Ray? Yeah. Andy, this is Greg Graywell. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, a few things. One, I, I don't know how many people know this. Uh, uh, the San Juan Water District had a Brown Act violation filed against them for using pending litigation as a way to hide the fact that they were not part of the uh, GSA cooperative group while they were trying to appropriate water behind uh, Santa Margarita Lake and Nascimento Lake. Uh, they're now sending out letters trying to get to see who will give them an easement for water lines, which uh, according to the water code and before LAFCO was supposed to approve them to be a water district, they were always supposed to have a system of works in place. So this shows specifically that they never had a system of works in place. And then I don't know how many people were listening uh, at the end of October, beginning in November, and public comments had to be in by the 20th of November uh, with the Army Corps of Engineers on the Salinas Reservoir and the disposition of that reservoir. And uh, I pointed out there's been 74 years of history to show uh, what has happened with the taking of watershed water from water, one watershed to another watershed because the Salinas River is the main artery that recharges the uh, Paso Robles Basin. And if Sigma wants the basin recharged, you have to quit taking the water that recharges it or you have to reduce what you're doing. That reservoir used to have beavers in it and steelhead up and down the Salinas. Now we just have homeless people. Um, so those are, those are some main things that I think need to be looked into. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear from the assistant district attorney, what the reply is on the Brown act violation. And I think this is a very important thing because one of the things that the assistant district attorney stated was the meeting of RAC where Steve Senton specifically said that they didn't tell anybody what they were doing and that's where it went. So. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? All right. Well, thank you everyone. Another great productive meeting, uh, very informative and appreciate everyone taking the time also for the introductions. It's nice to feel a little bit of uh, connection. We'll go ahead and adjourn to our next regularly scheduled meeting, which is not February 2nd. We're skipping February, canceling February, and going to March 2nd, 2022 at 1.30 uh, p.m. Um, via Zoom. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Thanks, everyone. Bye.